Good afternoon. You are watching the program Publishing. Today our guest is the number one man in Ukrainian animation, the famous Mitro Lisenbart. Well, you know, to be honest, it's quite difficult to be proud of Ukrainian roads or cars, but to be proud of Ukrainian animation, with its history, is definitely worth it. Ukrainian animation fed the entire animation school of the former Soviet Union. Unfortunately, it dissolved in the empire of that era. Now we have to pick up the pieces from it, claim our rights to animation and return the Ukrainian language to this sphere, because it is our very own Ukrainian animation. Listen Bard, he is an illustrator of children's books, he also published two of his own books, and this will be the subject of our discussion today. Among other things, he is a terribly cheerful and positive person. Now you will see for yourself. Dmitro, tell me honest, many people complain that times are hard, the old days are behind us, and new things have not appeared. So, what is the case with Ukrainian animation? Is it growing, or are we losing something? You are number one, you know? First, Andrei, there's nothing to complain about, we must do it. At the moment, there is a real upswing, and Ukrainian animation has finally begun without pathos. After all, this year Ukraine will celebrate 90 years of the animation. In honor of the 90th anniversary, the Ukrainian Animation Association was created for the first time in the history of Ukraine. We recently visited the French town of Annecy, where the world's largest film festival is held, an animation fair. It is a festival combined with sales sites and the purchase of animation content. We first put up a Ukrainian stand at this festival. Roughly speaking, we very officially declared Ukraine as a player in the world film market. This was done in the groove of the animation film industry. In the end, we achieved our goal and today we Ukrainians are finally aware of the most important thing, namely that Ukraine is now recognized by many countries of the world as a dynamic, creative and fully independent country. I'll tell you honestly, they say that if we take our neighbors, the Russians, then this Masha, the girl who runs after the bear, brought in more money than the entire Russian military complex, because, in fact, show business all over the world is and can be truly lucrative, no matter what country we're talking about. I do not know where you got information about the military complex of Russia, but the point is, no matter how strange we are towards Russia, my position is unambiguous about this. But it showed that, in fact, any content of any quality can be sold well что, в принципе, любой контент любого качества можно хорошо продать. Well, I'll tell you, just recently the world was struck by such an epidemic, a small postcard, stickers with babies with enlarged heads, all over the world. I also saw them abroad, but I did not know that the author and the source of this epidemic was a simple guy named Dmitro Lisenbard. You will not tell anyone, of course, but it is really him. Please love and respect him. Well, Dmitro, here you are now. Now, did it happen that an adult, wise person with great experience all of a sudden came up with such a totally childish theme through a book, stickers and some postcards? Please tell us exactly how this happened. It happened in some incredible way. My long-awaited daughter was born. The fact is that I worked in this field. I'm an animation director and it's close to me. I thoroughly enjoy drawing and exuding my emotions on paper. And the first thing that occurred to me is to draw about how she spends every day of her life and this is what I can do. And I like it better than taking photos, for example, because this is my emotion, this is what I'm experiencing at the moment. I'm fixing this, and I hope that when she grows up, she will appreciate all of this. I'll tell you, I brought such postcards from Paris and said, look, they know how to do this, and then I read that, it turns out it's you. Yes, it's us. Our stickers are in America and in Israel and in Germany, not all over the world, but little by little they are living their native land. In fact, it is difficult to say a new word in Ukrainian children's animation, because we have so many artists. We have Hapchinska or Yerko or Rudikova, and here is Dmitro Lisenbart, a completely recognizable worldwide image, and as a result there was also a book, which by the way was distributed in orphanages. How did you draw your dear little girl like this? this or like that. How did it happen? After all, books are not created and published that easily. 
Как случилось? Книжки так просто не случаются. It was not so easy. There was no plan at all in this book. Every day I put the pictures on Facebook every day and all my friends commented and they either liked it or did not like it. But for the most part they liked it. And I have a few friends who started writing poetry there under every picture. As a result, at the finish was Svetlana Tsvelodu, my great friend, who wrote all the main poems under the pictures, and it became quite obvious that a full-fledged book had to be made out of all of this. So in the end, this idea came to fruition in the form of a multimedia product with illustrations accompanied by poetry. Usually cartoons are made based on books. Apparently, this idea was totally the opposite for the first time a full-fledged book was created from a cartoon. By the way, look at this braided baby. Daddy praises her to people. Our fragile dog doll is a sleeping beauty and one day she will awaken and be a real beauty. By the way, it's called Puk Puk. It's about how the baby farts. Farts. The first time in her life she farts. My God, we all do something for the first time in our life. Yes, that's exactly what the book is about. It's about a baby's first steps in life. So the title arose also organically in a very funny battle with the famous artist Yermolenko. Together we came up with the final title of the book, Persho Svit. This is all about what a child experiences for the first time in this world. In the end, this name became a trademark that I have registered. We have created a website on which all these materials are sold. It was interesting to try to develop the project itself, in principle to turn it into something more than a book. As a result, we created a huge multimedia project in which initially the first animated children's series occupied the main place. We basically took this project to NSC and it received incredible feedback from everyone and we are now preparing for its production. Those who have published their own books probably know how difficult and sometimes impossible it is to get them on the bookshelf in bookstores. But a children's booklet is exactly what children needed and they were destined to eventually see it. And then Dmitro Lisenbart found a very clever solution. Now I hope he will tell us about it. Dima, well, this is your wonderful book. It was in orphanages. Today it is more popular there than it is on the shelves of your average everyday bookstore. On that note, please tell us and our viewers about your volunteer activity. Seeing as you are quite the modest person, I understand that you do not talk about it much. But I'm not a modest man, and I know about your wonderful project, so let's talk. Yes, it's true. We did not put this book for sale in bookstores. It only exists on our website. And at some point before the new year, for some reason, I had an idea to just distribute the book in orphanages. That's all. On the one hand, the idea was to do something that would be pleasing for orphans. On the other hand, I had an inner desire to look at children and hope they will become better in 10 to 15 years. I hope that this book would help them become better. I think that this book will be preserved with great care in children's homes. I hope so. But what if they eat it, as my daughter did right away, the first book? That is also good. That means that there is something special about it. A child would not eat something bad. They would be better off farting. Oh yes, but about the farts. Tell me please, I do not know if it's worth talking about. Maybe you're some kind of secretive person in this regard. But as far as I know, no, you are still engaged as a volunteer in aeronautical reconnaissance. Oh. Yes, I even got on the list of the State Security Service of Ukraine as a very undesirable social element or persona non grata that was clearly fighting against Russia. When the events began that everyone knows today as the Revolution of Dignity and Maidan, I, of course, went to the Maidan quite privately. We went to help gather food and medicine. There I ran into my longtime friend, who was once a rabbi, although there is no such thing as a former rabbi. He then headed the Jewish 100. His name is Nathan Hassin, who was naturally on all the lists of the Federal Security Service of Russia. At the time, he helped very much in the defense of the Ukrainian parliament on Hushevsky Street. He has a military background, as he had served in Israel and understood what this was about. So we met and talked about something, and two or three days later, Later, he came to me with his friend, the late Volodya Kochetkov and Yaroslav Honchar, and said, let's do some aerial reconnaissance. I wanted to help very much, to help the country and stand and help the guys. Because in fact, aerial reconnaissance saved more than one life. 
There are principles of a certain physical intelligence without helicopters, where there is a very great risk of losing a person in a patrol unit, and the drones did this task very effectively, which truly saved a lot of lives. Now, thank God, the organization has developed so much that we have entered the armed forces and we're already an official unit. But this is already a classified subdivision, and its name is classified. Unfortunately, I have nothing further to say. Then I will say honestly and directly that this country is invincible. This is a country in which animators and authors of books for the youngest children are engaged in aerial reconnaissance, save the lives of soldiers. I can only bow and remind you that our honored guest today in our program is Dmitro Lysenbart. Well, of course, going back to the animation, we cannot help but ask Lisenbart about his plans for the future, because everyone loves animation and cartoons, not only children. If you meet a grown-up man who says, no, no, this is for children, I do not like animation, it means only one thing. While nobody is home, he will watch the cartoon how the Cossacks played football, with great pleasure, and certainly reproduce the famous phrase from the Ukrainian cartoon. What? Once again? Now, Dima, for some reason, I am sure that after the first book about Marika, and then after the second one, there will be a third, fourth, fifth and sixth book, and in the end, the whole country will see how she grows up. That would be quite funny. Why not? Look, you're a person who combines a children's illustrator with animator. Do you plan to create a book about animation? An artist creates a book about an artist, about animation, the manual on animation. I don't know. I know one thing. Ukrainian animation is a big school. But with your experience, you can put out some kind of publication that would teach people to draw some conclusions. Are you planning to do anything like that? I don't know. Maybe we will do something like that. But for now, it makes sense for us to gather and correct those marks that were made over 90 years of Ukrainian animation. Maybe we'll make an archive that would be some kind of a library. We currently have plans to digitize all the famous cartoons that were made at the Ukrainian film studio. For example, Patrick Piatochkin still has billions of shows on YouTube. This is despite the fact that it was made using outdated technologies in an analog format. But in fact, the first thing we want to do is to fully digitize all the material and collect it in one place, so that it is saved. We want to save this legacy. As a classic example, the Japanese are very vigilant about this. The whole world thinks about it. They always collect it. They all have it. But we do not. Printing books about animation and how it is created and drawn does not make sense. There's no point in printing books about animation, how it is created and drawn. After all, Walt Disney set the rules in this sphere, and a lot of books on this subject have been created, how the animation itself is created, by what principles. If to publish one more such book, perhaps it would make sense to translate it into Ukrainian. Maybe it makes sense to make your own version, based on a new one, school in Ukraine, but it will still have the character of a worldwide trend in animation. When we were children, most of all we loved, as they say now, 2D cartoons, 3D cartoons, which we called puppets, and we could not stand it, and there is a little left of it. Modern-day children, for some reason, perceive picture cartoons as something old and even archaic. They want something more flashy, with all kinds of high-tech features. Is there such a trend today, or is this something in my inflamed brain? Your brain is not inflamed, everything is okay. It is all over the world now. I looked at this market, and in NSC, this trend of two-dimensional films is alive and well. It is not going anywhere. It remains progressive. Along with it, 3D technologies are developing. They are also developing the key of animation clips, in the key of augmented reality, and in game directions. This is necessary. But you just need to understand that a 2D picture, a flat picture, it is more readable by children of a very small age, from three to five years. Later, children will perceive more sophisticated images in a three-dimensional space. It's all a matter of one's ability to perceive objects, colors, styles. I still have not grown up. 
I am still three or five years old. It's good. It is better to remain a child. Then this world becomes much more interesting. Then there are no serious old farts who demand something from you. You can safely eat ice cream in a movie theater or do whatever you want. Come to us more often. You're adding optimism. Let me remind you that Mitro Lisenbart was our guest in our program today.